Hey all, welcome back for another week of Fabrication Friday. Today, uh, we are taking a little break from our uh, series on building a welding fabrication table. Uh, I got kind of a, a side job that popped in our school shop here, so I thought I'd make a quick video for that too here. Uh, today, we're gonna be talking a lot about aluminum, all right? Um, talking about uh, TIG welding aluminum, particularly uh, with Pulse, talking about some uh, considerations when working with aluminum, uh, as well as just uh, some, some overall um, images and, and video of, of what this product is going to look like. So stay tuned. Our next project uh, is a repair job on this tracker boat. Now this was uh, brought in by a friend of mine. Um, he bought it last year just as a fishing boat for him and his family. Uh, it's an older boat, so there are some cosmetic issues, one of which um, is back here on the transom. You know, on this side you can see uh, has this corner bracket um, bolted in basically attaching the transom to the sides of the boat. If you look on the other side here, you can see that that piece is actually missing. Okay, now uh, I, I know that this person, my friend used this boat in this condition uh, for an entire fishing season or most of a fishing season. It worked out great, uh, but it is one of those cosmetic things that um, just, just he wanted to get fixed up. So, looked it up. This part is, to the best of my knowledge, a cast aluminum part. Um, cost of that was a little prohibitive to buy and so we're going to look at fabricating up a bracket at least just just to makeshift hold it all together um, and give it a little cleaner appearance all right so after some thinking on how i'm going to tackle this project uh here's essentially what i came up with uh, originally i was really hoping i could have uh taken just one piece of aluminum cut out the entire thing and then bent it to, to basically wrap around the corner of our boat transom. Uh, however, as I got further into it, I realized uh, with the equipment we have, that was um, not going to be real easy to do. Uh, and so I, I switched gears a little bit. All right, and so what we have here is basically the start of our bracket. So this piece right here, um, this will end up wrapping around the transom itself. Okay, so, so this side will be bolted in on the transom, this side will be bolted in on um, the side of the hull, right? You'll notice it's, it's a little bit greater than 90 degrees. It's actually a 95 degree bend. Um, realistically, um, what I did was uh, I took it a little bit at a time and bent it to fit. Now, the one thing when you're bending aluminum, well, really, whenever you're working with aluminum, there's a lot of things you gotta be careful with. When you're bending aluminum, you really gotta be careful um, to get your bends quite right. So steel is real forgiving. When, when you bend it, it'll bend. Um, you can bend it back, rebend it, so on and so forth. With aluminum, you pretty much just get one shot. The molecular structure of aluminum is such that when you bend it, that basically locks in the molecules. That's kind of the way it's been explained to me, is that once you bend it, if you try to bend it back, you're basically breaking off that piece. Um, and so it's pretty sensitive. So this piece, I, I had to be real careful not to overbend it because I wouldn't be able to bend it back. Um, on the plus side, I got it. It fits pretty nice um, and away we go. So that wraps around the outside. Then this triangle will go ahead, we'll weld it together like so, and this will sit on top of the boat deck, all right? Now, um, one thing I forgot to add in here after I realized after I cut it was a little tab here for uh, like a rope tie down, um, but that's okay. That'll just be um, a little bit of welding later on. And so now the next step is really to weld these two pieces together. You can see we got quite a run of outside corner welds. Um, probably going to end up uh, TIG welding that with the aluminum filler wire. And so we'll go from there. Now, before we get there though, we've got to understand our situation and what we've done to this metal. So this metal, we've plasma cut it, all right? We, we've got plasma cut edges. It actually did a really nice job of cutting. However, when we use a plasma torch to cut anything, it leaves a little layer of oxides on the surface of the steel or, or on the surface of this metal. And so those oxides can cause some weld failure. They get in the weld, they cause porosity, just a lot of issues. Um, 
the conventional wisdom that I've always been told is that when you have one edge that's, that's um, been cut welding to just a plain edge, so let's say we were welding it like this, um, there's really not enough oxides there to cause issues. But when you take two plasma cut edges, like we're doing here, we have issues. And so we need to address those. The most it, oxides are really easy to get rid of here, really easy to do just by zipping them down with an angle grinder. Okay? Now, this brings up another point about aluminum. Okay, aluminum is what we call a non ferrous metal. It, it basically does not have iron in it. Okay, ferrous um, typically means iron. And so we have to be careful with how we're welding and prepping it. Okay. With aluminum, if we were to take this just on a regular grinding wheel, rather than having that grinding wheel spark off, burn off the iron, what we'd see is this aluminum would simply collect in the grinding wheel. Uh, when I was in high school, my, uh, well, my ag teacher, my welding instructor at that time, um, would, would talk about how he's seen it happen where grinding wheels get so full of aluminum they build up heat and they basically explode. So we want to avoid that. Um, so we enter some special grinding wheels. These are aluminum grinding wheels. Okay, they make special wheels meant for aluminum. We have a flap disc right here. All right, and we have just a regular grinding wheel. Now you can see all these silver flecks in there. That's actually the aluminum. However, the structure of this disc is such that we don't have to worry about this disc breaking apart. Okay. So we're gonna make sure we have the right abrasives, right? Now, some of you that know a little bit about welding, you might be saying, well, we, we weld aluminum on alternating current, okay? And when we use alternating current, we get what's called a cleaning action. That cleaning action will help burn away oxides off the, off the surface of the weld. And, and aluminum is very prone to, to that little surface level oxidization. Um, so wouldn't that AC current simply be enough to burn away those oxides? Um, I suppose it would be. Um, if I'm honest with you, I don't know. I haven't done a, a much enough with aluminum to know for sure. Plus, these edges are just a little rough, so we're going to go ahead and clean them up anyways just to be safe. Right? Um, if this was something for myself where, um, where I can take responsibility for it if, if something goes wrong, that's one thing. But this is for someone else. We don't want to be sending something out to, to another individual that could fail, um, that, that has defects in it. So we want this to be as nice as possible. So next we're gonna go ahead, zip down these edges where we're gonna weld. Uh, we'll fixture up um, or we'll clamp down our pieces and we'll have it welding it. For a good part of this project, um, I'm using uh, well, actually, all the welding done on this project is done on AC TIG, all right, alternating current TIG welding. Now, this is very much by design because when we're working with aluminum, um, just the, the metallic properties of that metal um, render it impossible to weld with direct current, um, well, relatively impossible to weld with direct current similar to other metals or other ferrous metals, and so we need to use AC, alternating current. Um, and so, uh, we need to know how to set our machine up, okay? Um, so here we're using a Miller Dynasty 280. Um, this is probably the, the um, top end TIG welder we have in our shop, but uh, several other lower quality welders will have this same setup as well. So um, when we come over here, we've got to look at this button that says polarity. Okay, when we are doing mild steel or stainless steel even, we need to go over to DC, direct current. Um, when we're on aluminum, we need to go to alternating current. Essentially what's happening is um, in alternating current, the, ch the direction in which the electrons or the, the flow of electricity is changing, okay? Alternately, the electrons are emitted or, or flow from the torch into the metal, um, and then it, it alternates uh, so that the negatively charged electrons are coming from the metal up into the electrode. Um, there's a lot of electrical science behind that, but that's the gist of it. Um, if you ever hear uh, AC welding going on or AC TIG, um, it's going to sound like uh, an angry wasp is buzzing around there. It's, it's pretty wicked um, if you're first learning how to do it. Sometimes, usually my students, first time they hear that, they, 
they jump and about drop everything uh, because they're, they're they're scared that they're breaking the machine. But but that's what it's supposed to sound like. Um, now on this dynasty, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of settings that we can mess with, we can play with. Um, I I suppose if we were using this for production and and as we learn more about it, we'll find uses for it. Um, but but at least for today. Uh, we're, we're just working with straight AC. Now, kind of interestingly, on the very last passes that I did where I was just providing a little cosmetic edge, I actually engaged this pulser, pulse setting. Now, what that will do, that pulse setting, is, is it, will, um, it will pulse out the, the level of, of amperage coming out of that torch. So, so this 165, if we turn the pulse on, that's what we call peak amperage. So at its highest level, that's what the amperage is coming off the, off the tungsten, okay? Um, the way we have our set machine, okay, uh, we can have our background amps, BKA background amps, we can adjust how low that machine goes. So I have it set to 40, or I had it set to 40% of that 165. Um, good rule of thumb from what I've heard is 33%, okay? Um, again, that's something you gotta play around with for this project, 40% worked really well, okay? Uh, pulses per second, now that's the amount of time, uh, or that's the number of times every second that our machine will pulse from our peak amperage 165 down to our background amperage 40 percent of that um, there's a lot of videos out on the internet on, on varying pulse speeds um, it, from what i can tell it's really up to personal preference um, typically i like to run um, no greater than 1.5 or 2 um, for this project i did 1.5 i found that allowed me um, to, to still maintain good travel speed um, but also to, to get the results I was looking for, okay? And that brings up the idea of why the heck are we even pulsing, okay? Pulse is really helpful for making not only a really pretty bead, but also controlling the amount of heat because if you remember, the okay, amperage, all that corresponds to is the amount of heat we're pumping into a material, all right? Um, so, so although it's, it's maybe um, a crude, a crude comparison here, let's say 165 amps, that's 165 degrees, that's quite a bit of heat, right? If we were pumping in that 165 all the time, that heat is gonna build very quickly. However, if we put the pulse on, and um, let's see here, peak time we have set to 40%, so only 40% of the time is it up at that 165, the other 60% of the time it's, it's down quite a bit lower, that is going to eliminate a lot of heat, right? It's going to allow us to control that puddle a lot more. It's going to allow us to not distort the metal quite so much. It's gonna allow us to maintain a narrower, smaller heat affected zone. Really useful for some of the outside edges and outside corners that we are doing on this project. Um, the other thing that this pulse allows you to do is it allows you to get a really pretty looking bead. Okay, as that weld goes into the background amperage, um, that background amperage is so lower, is so much lower that it will allow that weld puddle to slightly cool. Okay, it'll give that kind of stack of dimes um, uh, rippled effect that a lot of guys really like, and that was the look I was going for here. All right, and so um, pulse welding really helpful um, in some applications um, such as this. After test fit, essentially, we went ahead and started um, welding and pounding this into place. All right, so there was a bunch of weird compound angles on that boat corner, and so we uh, I ended up actually taking a, a five pound hammer um, and, and pounding this piece to fit. Um, you'll notice that after it all was fitted up, I ended up going ahead and doing just some really nice cosmetic welds. Okay, all the edges, I just took a, a uh, TIG torch, um, had it on the pulse setting, um, no filler at all, just something to melt over and round off those edges. Okay, um, does that not only to make it pretty, but also just to give it a little bit of a softer edge. By no means is those, or by no means are those cosmetic welds adding any sort of structural strength. Um, but they do just, just make it look a little bit nicer, look a little bit finished. Um, 
prior to to all this when I was cleaning it up. Um, I, I had a good weld in there. Um, it wasn't the prettiest weld, but it it was it penetrated and it, it was going to hold. Um, and so then it was just a matter of making it pretty. So uh, now uh, we're just going to finish letting it cool a bit. It's still a touch warm. Um, and then we'll go about installing it on the boat. And here is our cap um, installed on the boat, finished product, ready to go out the door. So uh, as you can see, it, it looks nice, right? It, it looks good, um, albeit it doesn't look exactly like the other side. That's okay. We knew that going in, um, but essentially we wanted to uh, create something that was functional um, and didn't look completely horrible, that, that uh, we could be uh, halfway proud to say, hey, this is on my boat. Um, ended up just attaching this with uh, some self-tapping screws. Um, we, we drilled it into the transom and then into the uh, sideboard here. So I, I'm hoping it'll, it'll hold up, um, but, but at least that end cap is solid. If the owner of the boat wants to attach it a little bit differently, that's, um, that, that, that's fine, that's not my job. Um, my job was simply to fabricate this and, and get something ready to go. Uh, so hopefully uh, you learned a little something here, learned a little bit of something about dealing with aluminum. Um, again, looking at material preparation, uh, looking at various welding, um, what various welding techniques look like in terms of their finished product. Um, in the end, kind of a fun little project. And that's a wrap. Uh, hopefully you guys have enjoyed watching this uh, as much as I enjoyed making it. Um, stay tuned. Every my, my goal is to release a video like this every Friday. Um, if you've got ideas, let me know. Um, I, I think you can shoot it down in the comments. Um, otherwise, subscribe. Um, stay tuned and have a great Fabrication Friday.